All right, come on. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Hunting Grounds. I am in the middle of the woods here on The Hunting Grounds property and I'm gonna do nothing but talk about management. You guys have been so great on commenting and responding to our videos that we've got out there that I'm just anxious to do more and more and more every single week. Just getting the time to do it is <laughs> kind of fun sometimes. But if you guys notice, I've got all these ribbons around me and I have promised you guys that I'm going to show you guys every step of the way on everything that we do here on the hunting grounds. Well, you can see this long stretch of timber here. Well, it's not going to be here for much longer. I've got some dozer guys coming out, some loggers that are going to be coming out here. And what they are going to be doing is clearing this whole area that you can see here back behind me. All these trees that have red ribbon is kind of my boundary line. This is where I've said, Dozer does not come past and I've got trees marked in here. And this is going to be about a 200 yard long ridge down through here and it's not going to be too wide. For the most part at the widest point it might be 60 yards wide. It's going to be on average between probably 35 and 50 yards wide for about 200 yards down through there. Now one thing you guys can't see a little bit further away on the other top of the other ridge is where we currently already have a food plot and I'm going to talk about the food plots a little bit later on showing you guys the results from last year and the pressure that the deer put on them. But excited for this. This is something you guys are going to have to keep up with. If you guys are following me on our Facebook page and stuff I'm doing small semi live videos on there while I'm out here keeping you guys up to date and I will be throwing them up on YouTube and Facebook as well. So here is the spot that we are fixing to clear out. This is going to be changing drastically in the next few weeks. I cannot wait to show you guys what this looks like. I know this is going to be a Tom Strutton Haven all the way up down through here. Bucks are going to cruise up through here and I'm going to be way up high this fall in one of these advanced tree stands waiting for that big buck to come through. So we're gonna walk through here, look for a little bit of sheds. I've got Journey here with me. And uh, then I wanna to talk to you guys about our food plots we planned last year, show the results. Now before the question is asked, why are we coming in and clearing out all this beautiful timber on this ridge top? And I can tell you why, and it's because we have a lot of trees just like this white oak here. A lot of smaller trees that are all suppressed because of the growth of the canopy. They aren't producing anything. They supply no bedding or forage down low. And honestly, to come in and to clear this out, it's gonna give us a lot more tonnage on our property of food for the wildlife. So we're gonna take out all these trees, and there are some of the remaining producing white oaks that I am going to leave strategically down through the food plot where I know it's going to be a little hot spot in the middle of the plot when the tree's dropping all those white oak acorns in the middle of fall I know the deer are going to be concentrating and hopefully I can put my stand side up on that but coming in eliminating these trees allowing that sunlight to come through hit the food plot is going to provide a lot of tonnage on this back side one thing that we'll show you guys later this season is we're actually going to clear out a lot of this back hillside to south facing hill slope get a lot of deer bedding on it late in the season we're going to come in pretty much clear it out prescribe burn it get a lot of native forbs and grasses and saplings growing up so it's going to be great bedding and so great bedding on the back of this hillside between the far food plot and this food plot is going to make this one happening spot here on the hunting grounds. Well here we are on the southernmost food plot on the hunting grounds. This is the food plot where you guys saw me take my first deer off my newly acquired property last season and this is a spot where Scotty killed his doe when we tagged on a double for the last hunt of the 2015-2016 deer season for us. But these food plots did phenomenal. I couldn't have asked them to do any better. I came in because I acquired the property so late in the summer, I believe it was almost September, we threw these food plots in. It might have been just a few weeks before September hit, but it was kind of late for us, but we knew we had to get deer to this property because I'd been checking my spot point trail cameras and I had only a few deer on this property, meaning maybe two or three is what I was regularly having on this property. 
Now I do know I have a limited resource out there and that is water. I don't have any water up on any of my ridges because all these ponds have pretty much gone dry and I plan on digging those out this summer and establishing some good water sources. But we went ahead and quickly threw in these food plots and the deer seemed like they came from counties away to the hunting grounds here. I definitely thought I had enough food plots to maintain my deer herd and to keep up with the deer pressure throughout the season because I had about eight acres here planted on my 91 acres that I own and I thought that was going to be enough. Well, I quickly realized about halfway through the season it was not going to keep up with them. Before we got too far into season, these food plots were already about a foot and a half, almost two foot tall. You even saw Scotty's daughter Riley come out in the youth season hunt in early November and this food plot was flourishing, but quickly about halfway through December, the amount of deer that were coming to this property were not allowing my food plot to keep up with their brows. And you could clearly see it. By the end of the season, I was down to pretty much dirt. And that was pretty surprising for planting eight acres here on the hunting grounds last year and hoping it was gonna keep up with it. Well, that leaves me two options. One, I leave the food plots the way they are, the size they are, and I just keep replanting them and replenish them every year. And I've gotta come in and kill more deer to keep the deer brows off the food plots so it can maintain the herd that I have here. Or I can expand the food plots and increase my deer numbers so I'm seeing more deer from the stand, which I like to do. So I choose option number two, and that's part of why I'm going in and planning and clearing that big food plot on that long ridge and I've already started coming in knocking down taller parts of the field so we can add to the existing food plots creating larger food plots and hopefully more tonnage for the deer and keeping up with that deer herd well I have some friends arriving here because we got a little bit of work to do we are going to be burning this weekend so we're preparing for that and I can't wait to bring you guys more episodes every single week so if you guys aren't subscribed be sure to <laughs> I'm all tongue-tied here. And guys, if you aren't subscribed, please take time to subscribe on YouTube and on Facebook, and even go to our website at tsg-tv.com where we send out weekly email blasts every time we release a new video there. Guys, until next time, go out of your way to get a youth or new hunter involved in the outdoors, and as always, have a better than average day.